Hello everyone, how's your day? I hope all of you are doing fine. Today's podcast topic is all about Earth's materials and processes. But first, before we begin, Kisha, would you like to give us a quick summary of our topic today? Sure, of course. So, um, when you're outside, you can see that rocks are all around us, right? So, many early man-made structures were made simply by sticking rocks and mortar together. Roads, walls, buildings, and a lot of other things were made with these two things only. With that said, despite being so abundant on our planet, the size and origins of rocks are surprisingly complicated. From the formation of rocks, along with the different ways rocks are formed, to the different types of classifications of rocks. The world of rocks and minerals is shockingly diverse and deep. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, if you take it from an outside perspective, technically the Earth is one huge landmass made up of lots of huge rock fragments called plates. You can basically consider our planet as one gigantic rock. Anyway, with this in mind, today we will be answering and tackling any questions people may have about the minerals and rocks that make up such a fundamental part of our planet natural physiology. Okay, thank you so much, Kisha and Trish. Now, let us proceed to our main topic. The materials and processes as part of the Glencoe Science 15 book series provide students with accurate and comprehensive coverage of minerals and rocks. Along with the dynamic nature of plate tectonics, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Does anybody want to add more information to that? Sure, I'll add on to that. For starters, the Earth has six major systems. There are the geosphere, which is the solid molten rock, soil, and sediments. The hydrosphere, which covers water and ice. The atmosphere, which is responsible for air. And the biosphere, which contains all living things on our planet, including humans. Now, you might be wondering more about the Earth's minerals and processes. So, does anyone have anything to share? I have something to share. Did you know that minerals are solid substances that occur naturally? It can be made from one single element or a combination of elements. Our Earth is made up of over a thousand different minerals. It's a bit fascinating to think about. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Wait, do you guys know what is the difference between a mineral and a rock? Oh me, I know this one. So minerals have a specific chemical composition, right? Which is the same throughout the entire mineral. Rocks, on the other hand, are composed of a variety of minerals that are not consistent throughout the structure. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, wait. I've heard from somewhere that rocks can be formed in some type of way. Like, I heard that they can be identified using their chemical and physical properties. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Rocks can be differentiated in their chemical and physical properties by identifying the color, hardness, luster, crystal formations, density, and cleavage. These are characteristics that each geologist in determining a mirror's identity in a rock. The atomic structure of a crystal essentially determines its form, cleavage, and hardness. Chemical composition is the main determinant of color and density. Ah, okay. Doesn't rock forming have two types? Isn't sedimentary rock and igneous rock, right? Um, actually, there are three. The other type is called metamorphic rock. Oh, so there are three types of rock forming. Can you explain it further? I'm rather curious to know how these types of rock forming work. Sure, I'd be happy to. So, like what I said earlier, there are indeed three types of rock forming. The first one is a sedimentary rock. It's formed from places of other existing rocks or organic materials. The second one is the igneous rock, which is derived from the Latin word for fire. It forms when hot molten rock crystallizes and solidifies. So, Keisha, do you have any more ideas about rock forming? 
If you do, can you share some of this? Thank you, Tony. I do actually have more information about igneous rocks. Um, did you know that there are actually two types of igneous rocks? They are called extrusive and intrusive. Extrusive rocks are formed on the surface of the earth from the lava, which is basically just magma that has emerged from underground. Some examples of this are obsidian, pumice, and andesite. Intrusive rocks, on the other hand, are formed from magma that cools and hardens with the tannic crust. Some examples of this are diorite, granite, and pigmatite. Now, to compare these two, extrusive rocks are usually smoother and glassy, while intrusive rocks are roughly textured. Depending on the type of rock, I'd very much like to know. Ah, good question. It actually depends on what type of stress and tension the rock has to go through. There are three main types of stress rocks undergo, which are compressional, tensional, and shear. In compressional states of stress, rocks usually get shattered or shorter since it is essentially getting squeezed. Tensional stress, on the other hand, is when the rock essentially gets pulled apart and most likely will shatter, but in some cases can make the rock deformed and elongated. Lastly is shear stress, where rocks are getting pulled parallel to the surface, which causes rocks to slip past each other. Um, wait, so this rock strengthening thing, is this the cause of why the continents drift? No, is it actually? The causes of continental drift are perfectly explained by plate tectonic theory. The Earth's outer shell is composed of plates that move a little bit every year. And the heat that's coming from the interior of the Earth triggers these movements to occur through convention currents inside the mantle. Over the course of million years ago, witnessed in the present day. Now, it is clear to you guys or not? Oh, so that's how it works. Yes, it's clear to me now. Thank you, Reza. Welcome! Now, I have a question too. What are the lines of evidence of continental drift theory? Can someone explain it to me? Oh wait, let me explain that one, okay? So, the types of evidence according to Sir Wegener are it's a jigsaw fit, fossil evidence, evidence from rocks, from climate change, and from magnetic polarity. These are the pieces of evidence that support the plate tectonics theory or the continental drift theory. And the reasons why these evidences support the theory is because, first of all, Wagner theorized that the Earth once had a supercontinent, which was called Angia. But as you can see in today's time, the continents have drifted apart. And from his observations, the continents look much like puzzle pieces. That's why uh, the jigsaw fit. You guys thoroughly explained the evidences, quite engagingly. I agree. Thank you for explaining it to me. That's really interesting. You guys said that the continents or the plates of the Earth rather move, right? 
I'm just wondering what are the different results for this, like the movement of the plates? Oh, well you see, the movement of large plates on the surface of the earth uses quite a lot of energy. A lot of the energy is transferred to the surrounding environment causing mountains to ride where plates crash together, fractures to form causing the creation of trenches on the oceans, and islands to separate due to different plates diverging. Oh, I see. So this is like the John process, right? Actually, it isn't. This process is what we call the endogenic process, since this is a geological term that describes internal processes of the Earth including the movement of the Earth's plates. Mm. What about exogenic processes? That's the type of process wherein it takes place near or the, at the Earth's surface. These are a part of the nodation process which involves wearing away the Earth's surface. Doesn't the exogenic processes have three types? Oh wait, I know this one. Weathering, erosion, and deposition are the three types of exogenic processes. Weathering is the process by which surface and subsurface rocks are disintegrated, dissolved, or are broken down. There are two types of weathering which are physical and chemical weathering. Erosion is when pieces of the earth are broken down by weathering. They are carried away in a process. And lastly, deposition is a constructive process that lays down or places weather and eroded materials in a location that is different from their source. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Thank you, thank you. Um, now that you guys, you know, explain it quite well, I think I have like a deeper understanding of this topic now. Oh really? Can you elaborate further then? Since you understand it much deeper. Ah. Okay, next question, next question. Uh, LSC, Tony, do you guys have um, any further questions to ask? I do actually have one more question. Do you guys know how the Earth's history can be interpreted from the geologic timescale? I actually read somewhere that scientists use relative dating to divide the Earth's past into several chunks of time when similar organisms were on Earth. This method organizes the Earth's history by major changes or events by using evidence from fossils and geologic records. So does it make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you, Tony. I remembered that relative dating is used to determine the relative order of past events and are in arranging geological events based on the rock sequence. Meanwhile, this other method, called absolute dating, is where they use to determine the actual age of the rocks. Hey everyone, it's time to wrap up our episode. Does anyone want to give a simple conclusion in today's discussion? Uh, yes, uh, so we hope we managed to answer all of your questions. The science and nature of rocks uh, is quite fascinating to observe. The fact that these small stones can be found anywhere can have the most intriguing and most interesting origins is pretty cool to see, don't you think? It is very interesting indeed. It is not often that you can say something as mundane as a rock origin is from a volcano, mountain, mountain, or wall thing. Uh-huh. And with that being said, we again hope that you had a good time learning about rocks as much as we did. So 